Parliament Square, home to Goliath's epistry. Winston Churchill, David Lloyd George, Nelson Mandela, and now Mahatma Gandhi. The champion of Indian independence stands face to face with the Houses of Parliament. Gandhi became the voice of a nation, celebrated by millions, including the hundreds that turned up for the unveiling. It's a really good honour to be here, to be in front of Mahatma Gandhi and stand in there. He was one of the greatest people on earth as well, as the people who are here. It is all because of we just wanted to chair India in Britain, in, in London. Gandhi's legacy was forged by his non-violent campaign for Indian independence from British rule, a cause that in 1931 brought him to Britain, where he stayed in poverty-stricken East London, and in his trademark dotty met with mill workers in Lancashire. I shall carry with me the pleasantest memory of my stay in the midst of the poor people of East London. The British announcement of the so-called peace statue made on a visit to India last summer has been questioned as it came within days of a £250 million agreement to sell arms to India. In this great square. Unrelated, says the government. I think it's irrelevant, I really do. As I've said, this is about people-to-people -people ties. And let's not forget as well, you know, we've had the Indian Finance Minister here today unveiling the statue alongside our Prime Minister. And that is also about, you know, the people ties, how we can also support India's growing economy. As this statue celebrates the incredibly special friendship between the world's oldest democracy and its largest. Words that contrast with how this figure of passive resistance was viewed by a man whose statue stands yards away. Churchill once called him a half-naked backer. Now carved in that iconic dress, he stands across from the heart of British democracy, a reminder of a time when the relationship between the two was more tense. <laughs>